Jaya Radha Madhava Kundra Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kundra Bihari Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Supri Raja Kachaja Satara Sata Sri Shriman. The Divine Grace of our Chana Vinda Bhakti Vranda Swami Sri Shriman. The Divine Grace of our Chana Vinda Bhakti Vranda Swami Prabhupada Ki. This kind of boundary chari divine grace of Prabhupada Ki. BBT founder chari divine grace of Prabhupada Ki. Savior of the whole world is divine grace of Prabhupada Ki. Jai Nitya Lila Pavishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahang Sapari Raja Kachaja Astata Sata Sri Shriman. Divine Grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Prabhupada Ki. Anatta Koti Vaishnava Brinda Ki. Granta Raj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki. Go Premanandi. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru, Sri Guranga, and Srila Prabhupada. Reading from Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, Volume 6, Chapter 11, The Final Lesson. Despite his promise to live, Srila Prabhupada said his life was still in Krishna's hands. Everything was. His free choice did not mean he was absolutely independent. Rather, the pure devotee's attitude is to freely surrender to Krishna, whatever happens. In the mood of the gopis, the foremost devotees of Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prayed, you may handle me roughly in your embrace or make me brokenhearted by not being present before me, but you are always my worshipable Lord unconditionally. Because the exchanges between the Lord and his pure devotees are always supremely personal, both devotees express desires and individual will. In his childhood Leela, Krishna sometimes breaks Mother Yashoda's butter pot, and sometimes he allows her to catch him and bind him. In any case, the will of the Lord and the will of the devotee are always one in interest, but they are sometimes expressed in the form of a loving conflict. Similarly, although Srila Prabhupada had promised his devotees that he would stay in the world and defy death, he still remained surrendered to the will of Krishna. Srila Prabhupada expressed his surrender in the prayer he had given his disciples to offer on his behalf. My dear Lord Krishna, if you desire, please cure Srila Prabhupada. By the phrase, if you desire, he was reminding his followers of the supreme prerogative of Krishna, and was asking them to abide by it, although he was also giving them an acceptable way to petition Krishna. In a similar case in 1967, he had given his disciples another prayer. My master has not finished his work. He had said then that Krishna had responded to this prayer, granting the wishes of the devotees. Srila Prabhupada himself was responding to the devotees' prayers, and Krishna had given him the choice. But as a surrendered soul, Srila Prabhupada waited for further developments, ever sensitive to Krishna's desire. As Prabhupada had said, when invited by Kirtananda to come to his palace in Nubrindavan, let us see which palace I am going to. As a loving tension can sometimes exist between the Supreme Lord and his pure devotee, so now a similar tension existed between Srila Prabhupada and his followers. Prior to his disciples' desperate petition at his bedside, Srila Prabhupada had seen his duty as instructing his disciples in how to die. Part of his mission was to set the perfect example in this most important lesson, how to pass life's ultimate test. But now his disciples were asking him to postpone the lesson in dying and stay with them indefinitely in the preaching field. And Prabhupada had agreed, showing that he had the ability to live if he chose. But sooner or later, he would have to return to the lesson on how a person should face the end of life. 
One special feature of Srila Prabhupada's activities is his relating intimately to the human condition while at the same time remaining aloof and transcendental. As a pure devotee, he was not subjected to the law of karma, which awards reactions for pious and sinful deeds. He was not born by the force of karma, nor would he die by the force of karma. As stated by Srila Rupa Goswami, one whose body, mind, and words are fully engaged in devotional service to Lord Krishna is a liberated soul even while living in this world. People often misunderstood the movements of a pure devotee within the material world, just as one on seeing clouds blowing past the moon may think the moon itself is moving. The Shastras therefore warn us never to see the Guru as an ordinary man subject to karma. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Krishna Prampadaya Te Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gorsha Maha. Reading from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, Chapter 1, Adi, cha Text 45, 44. Okay. Yadyapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Radas Tatapi Janiya Ami Tanhara Prakash. So we can just repeat, I guess, the couplet. So I'll chant the first line. Yadyapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Yara Das. Tatapi Jani Ye Ami Tanhara Prakash. Please chant. Yadyapi Guru Chaitanya Yara Das. Tatapi Jani Ye Ami Tanhara Prakash. Yapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Radas. Tatapi Jani Ami Tanhara Prakash. You could chant the whole shloka. Yajapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Radas Tatapi Jani Ye Ami Tanhara Prakash Anyone else? Yajapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Radas Tatapi Jani Ye Ami Tanhara Prakash Ladies. Yajapi Amaru Guru Chaitanya Radas. Tatapi Jani Ami Tanhara Prakash. Yajapi Amaru Guru Chaitanya Radas. Tatapi Jani Ye Ami Tanhara Prakash Yadyapi, even though Amara, my Guru, spirit, spiritual master, Chaitanya of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Dasa, the servitor, Tatapi, still. Jani Ye, no, Ami, I, Tanhara, of the Lord, Prakash, direct manifestation. Translation and purport by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Although I know that my spiritual master is a servitor of Sri Chaitanya, I know him also as a plenary manifestation of the Lord. Please repeat. Although I know that my spiritual master is a servitor of Sri Chaitanya, 
I know him also as a plenary manifestation of the Lord. Purport. Every living entity is essentially a servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the spiritual master is also his servant. Still, the spiritual master is a direct manifestation of the Lord. With this conviction, a disciple can advance in Krishna consciousness. The spiritual master is non different from Krishna because he is a manifestation of Krishna. Lord Nityananda, who is Balaran himself, the first direct manifestation or expansion of Krishna, is the original spiritual master. He helps Lord Krishna in his pastimes, and he is a servant of the Lord. Every living entity is eternally a servant of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Therefore, the spiritual master cannot be other than a servant of Lord Chaitanya. The spiritual master's eternal occupation is to expand the service of the Lord by training disciples in a service attitude. The spiritual master never poses as the supreme self. He is considered a representative of the Lord. The revealed scriptures prohibit one's pretending to be God. But a bona fide spiritual master is a most as Krishna. Omagyana Tamranda Shyagana Jalashvakaya Chaksur Moita Mina Tazma Shri Gurbena Maha Mukam Karoti Bhashalam Panku Mankai Tegum Rikrita Maham Bande Shri Gurum Dinatanam. So this title of this chapter, The Spiritual Masters, is a clear indication of the direction that the Chaitanya Charitamrita begins in such a direct uh, presentation. Because we can, from this we can appreciate how important it is that one understands the, uh, who is the spiritual master? What is his position? Not that he is, uh, as described here, appears in a certain family, like we saw in the Lilamrita, and that one considers him in, in a, some generic social consideration. You know, he, the, uh, that the spiritual master is from a certain country or a certain ethnicity or certain this or certain that. This is, these things all are the very dangerous misconceptions. And Krishna specifically says that one should see the spiritual master as himself. So this is not, this is a bold statement. <clears throat> you know, and we have a tendency to categorize things according to our limited perception and conception. You know, so this is not, we have to be very cautious and on guard in all of our dealings with the spiritual master. You know, we may uh, have occasion to render some direct service, but one should never think of the spiritual master as an ordinary human being. Because this leads to the danger, the pitfall of familiarity. And familiarity breeds contempt. So therefore, one's service to the spiritual master is usually not very uh, extended. Prabhupada would uh, have some particular devotees for, but many of them could not last in his association. There were a few very prominent, you know, and the, how you can understand why these devotees were able to have such an extended period of association is because of their uh, specific service attitude. Uh, is that they never felt any uh, familiarity, and therefore there was no contempt, no, none of this um, thinking. That, and we see, and Prabhupada would take specific precautions as well, because he could understand how easy it is for someone to feel himself familiar. Uh, if you notice in Prabhupada's, very rarely did he take prasadam in anyone's association, any of his disciples' associations. He was always taking prasadam by himself. You know, sometimes there was a, a, a situation that might have been related to a preaching engagement, so there might be some guests, 
and in that way. But otherwise, typically, Prabhupada would eat by himself. Hmm? Also, it gives us some indication how one should honor prasadam. Not that this is just some mundane act of putting, you know, something in the mouth and Shri Shri in the Dev Ki Jai. But that one should be very contemplative. That this is, uh, this in itself is an act of worship. That we honor prasadam. It's not that this is something which we uh, have a right to. You know, that we have expectations. That someone, uh, sometimes we see that that happens. Someone comes late for prasadam and what happens? He's angry. You know, but this is, uh, Prabhupada said that the disciple doesn't come to eat unless the spiritual master calls him. You know, so this is something that, that everybody should be familiar with. It's not something, it's a very special uh, interaction. And uh, nobody understands this relationship, that uh, how the Supreme Lord is manifest in this way as mercy. And so when we have that attitude to honor Prasadam, uh, I mean, all of these things are cumulative. They add up. It's not, they're not separate and disconnected. The attitude one develops here specifically to serve the spiritual master, this is the key to success in spiritual life, to have this Tadvidi pranipat hori prashne sevya. In the very beginning, Krishna is giving this instruction to Arjuna that one has to have this submissive attitude. And he can have it either by culture. You know, in certain cultures, the elders are respected. The sannyasis are respected. In America, they didn't have such. In America, nobody was respected. And so for Americans to learn this to develop this attitude. It was a little tricky. Had it not been for Srila Prabhupada, who was, as described here, a perfect example in life and death, then it would have been uh, practically impossible. But because his uh, constant deference to his spiritual master in everything he did, that everything is being done, everything is by the grace of my guru, and so he's teaching the disciples that, yes, this is the position of the spiritual master. And by his humility and by his patience in giving uh, these uh, newcomers something which was unavailable in the Western world, totally unavailable. There was no such, it was just the opposite, that we are not servants to anyone. And this was anathema. This was the the worst possible thing that a person could uh, subject himself to, it was felt that he should feel himself subordinate or subservient. You know. But Srila Prabhupada made it so easy to serve someone. He was such a uh, simple, at the same time, almost uh, his attitude encouraged one to uh, engage in some menial service just by his association. So no one felt any inhibitions or uh, discomfort when it came to serving Srila Prabhupada. And so therefore, uh, we could appreciate uh, through practical application of the process how beneficial it was to serve a pure devotee. And that through that experience, hopefully we're able to uh, present that same opportunity to others who are coming, who similarly came, who have no experience in developing this service attitude. Of course, service attitude is there. They, the karmis have it, but they're giving their service to the wrong based on some mental concoction. They're serving so many useless humanitarian endeavors, you know, because of a poor fund of knowledge. And it just has to be redirected, you know, to serving those, that person who is actually worthy of 
receiving uh, such service. And if it's directed in that way, then we can, uh, we'll gr very quickly make spiritual advancement. And that in itself is, should be sufficient uh, to propel one further on the path of spiritual life. Because he sees that, yes, uh, by serving the spiritual master, I am feeling satisfied, and I am feeling this same uh, sense of fulfillment that is void in most relationships in the material world. When you serve someone in the material world, it has to be some, what did Pallad Maharaj said, this uh, mercantile, you know, in India, banik, baniya. You know, so there has to be some exchange. But in the spiritual realm, there's, this exchange is not by some uh, this monetary or uh, tangible uh, exchange. You're not getting anything in return like, uh, what is that? He was being offered a kingdom greater than his father. Hmm? Similar to Dhruva Maharaj, a kingdom greater than his father. What can be greater than the kingdom that Karanyakashipu controlled at that time? He had conquered the heavens. So there was no kingdom in this particular realm that was greater than his. But he refused it. He said, I don't want it. And, he, and that exchange that I'm not, I'm not serving you to get something in return. So this attitude, if it can be developed uh, with maturity, not fanatically, not impetuously, but if it can be de developed with, in full knowledge that I'm serving the spiritual master because he is the external manifestation of Krishna, as it's described here. Uh, and how can I please, and we always use that analogy of watering the root of the tree, so we're not, uh, uh, and we had this exchange not too long ago. We, I sent around that little excerpt in the lecture probably gave in my poor about parampara servant. You know? So we're, by serving the spiritual master, ultimately we're serving Krishna. And one can consider it either in a linear fashion by thinking, yes, I'm a servant of my spiritual master. He's a servant of his spiritual master. So there's an unbroken chain. This is the Avam Parampara Praptun. And one can consider like that from a logical, and that he's protected in this way, just like when one goes to school, he wants to know what are the bona fides of the teacher, especially in the realm of martial arts. There was a, a clear connection in a particular school that this is my teacher, and then he had his teacher, and his teacher goes back to the uh, multiple generations of teachers, and so therefore it's accepted as a bona fide school. But without that lineage, without that providence, nobody would accept it. Uh, then they're uh, unauthorized. Right, so we can see that from our experience, that if one is accepting some unauthorized person as a spiritual master, then he will not, he will be unfortunately misled, but he may not know it up until so, many, so much time has passed. One of our God family, one of my God brothers, he was a sannyasi in a, another spiritual organization for many, many, many years. And then at one point, he was fortunate enough to get, you know, to read Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. And of course, that realization that one has spent so much time, uh, in one sense, without profit, uh, could be very discouraging. But he realized that he could make the best use of a bad bargain. And he immediately applied himself with renewed vigor in spiritual life because he had already come to a point where yeah, there's nothing more to achieve in these so-called pseudo 
Sampradayas. You know, what, what happens? You don't, you, there's no goal, really, to become one with, you know, some undefined, you know, source of everything, the Brahma Jyoti. Vedanti Tat Tatvavidas, you know, you get to that point, there's nothing. Prabhupada was saying in a lecture, he said, he, he said, Prabhupada said, I have practical experience at riding on this ship. It is not natural. One wants to be on land. He wants to get and go and rest. He doesn't want to be in that environment. It's not natural. He said the same thing about being in the sky. So this Brahma Jyoti, this Brahma realization, if somebody puts you in the sky and you're there for eternity, it is as you, he said, you'll commit suicide. Of course, you can't commit suicide there, but you've already committed spiritual suicide. But for emphasis, we can understand that this is the, the situation. So he, was, he, he became so renewed simply by understanding that he, had, that, uh, he could uh, pick up exactly where he left off from a previous life, appreciating, because he was reading Bhagavad Gita, so he's reading, you know, uh, that uh, Srimatam Gehe. And he understood that, yes, I was. I was looking for this, uh, but I mistook this other process. And so temporarily I was uh, diverted. See, but he didn't, it wasn't permanent. So we don't know where in a previous life he left off, but it's clear that there's no loss or diminution. So he was able to come back exactly where he left off. And so when you realize that I'm coming back where I left off, there's no, what's the lamentation? You know, if I was in this situation for 20 or 30 years, you know, there's still no loss because now I have come back on the path. Just like if you, if you get lost, you drive for two hours, sometimes it happens until you realize, wait a second, I'm going in the wrong direction. And you have to turn the car around and you have to go back. Sometimes you even have to pay a double toll. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen. But once you're back on the path, you realize, yes, I'm going to get to my destination. But I, I just, I was lost. Right? And what do the Christians, they have that whole song. I was lost and now I'm found. Amazing grace. Right? So yeah, so everybody in the material world is lost up until the point when he comes in contact again with his, uh, the thread that was dropped, that's compared that. Just like if you drop a thread on the ground, it can lie there, but you can pick it up exactly where it was and continue on from whatever point that is. So it's, there's no loss. Uh, but one should take uh, advantage of the association of devotees uh, and especially the association of the pure devotee, as soon as he's able to realize that this is, this is the, the opportunity that I've been waiting for, uh, after many, many births, he was actually acknowledged, surrenders unto Krishna. But not everybody gets that. They think, okay, well, let me just examine it, look at, look at it. And, you know, because we're used to looking at things very scrutinizingly. Why? Because there's so, many, so much cheating going on in the material world. So therefore we have to look at the ingredients that there's rice flour in the turmeric. <laughs> we have to be very careful. We have to read everything extremely carefully. So, but there's no, how do you read, you know, who is the bona fide spiritual master? And you have to, by hearing, how does he speak? You know, there's other methods. Krishna gives some hint there. But ultimately, uh, the nectar devotion gives us, it says that that person who removes doubt and delusion. So when this enlightened moment, it doesn't, it's not a prolonged epiphany. It comes in full knowledge, and you have to grab it at that point. 
just like, you know, there are so many analogies you can use, the so-called wheel of fortune. And as you spin this thing, and it, it's going to click, click, click. Now, if you could just stop it at the right point on the jackpot, then you've achieved your goal. But some people listen and still don't commit because they just, that, for many reasons, it could be because of uh, some traumatic experience in the material world. There are so many. Pick anyone. You know, they come in a million different flavors. You know, and he's, so he's hesitant. He's, he's had bad uh, relationships. This also prevents one from making a full surrender to the spiritual master and to Krishna. Because he thinks, I don't want to be disappointed. What if it's wrong? So you have, by studying and coming in contact with the pure devotee, automatically misgivings will be momentarily lifted so you can see clearly Krishna and Maya side by side. So, but that's the point you have to grab. You know, because for some it's very fleeting. In my situation, it came when I was sitting in Srila Prabhupada's presence. He was giving a lecture and I was just a, a visitor, guest. I hadn't fully committed, you know. And I, well, but when he spoke in such a way, I immediately saw this clearly, the difference between illusion and reality. This Dharma project, the kai devotra, paramo nirmatra. So the spiritual master is the only person who can do that. You know, so it's, it's there in the books. Of course, anyone who has an opportunity to associate with Srila Prabhupada in the Bhaktivedanta purpose gets the same benefit. It's not that because Prabhupada is not here that, that his, somehow his potency has become diminished. He reads in Dil who tells that Vaishnava is dying when now living still and sound. A Vaishnava dies to live and living spreads the holy name around. <clears throat> so everything is there. And he's acting through his agents. Those persons who are sincere and strictly following, uh, then that person is suitable uh, and he can be considered to be uh, in the line. Prabhupada used to use that term, in the line. If you're not in the line, you cannot understand, he would say in Mayapur. You know, there are some very intimate details, this relationship between the disciple and the spiritual master, the spiritual master and Krishna. <clears throat> If one doesn't have the, the, the complete concept, then yes, there'll be hesitation. He will not be able to commit himself. He will not be able to surrender. He will not be able to have firm faith. So this is essential. Well, our reading this and everything about the spiritual master is simply meant to bring us to that point of surrender so that we have faith because from that faith uh, one who has implicit faith in the spiritual master and Krishna all the imports of the Vedas are automatically revealed so there is no academic endeavor that will bring you to that point quicker than the ability to repose one's faith, not blind faith, intelligent faith, in a person who can give you Krishna. So this takes study. One has to listen. He has to listen carefully to the spiritual master. He has to li there are so many recordings. Uh, there are thousands of recordings of Srila Prabhupada. I'm sure there are thousands of recordings of, of uh, his disciples giving discourses. And you will not find any difference in those who are in the line. Right. And so as long as you see that continuity, uh, that same uh, attention to the essence without deviation, then you can be sure that you're getting the same product. It's not adulterated. Right? No rice in it. Okay? So we want that unadulterated, that ahoitakiya uh, pratiyata. Uh, so we have to develop that. Because if you don't develop it, how can you recognize it? How will you be able to see who is, is this person, the actual uh, bona fide representative? 
So the disciple has to be qualified. He has to follow. He has to learn. He has to hear. He has to practice. He has to see what does it mean, unmotivated, unalloyed, uninterrupted. So this is what a temple is for, to practice. Yeah, there's things that many people will not have an opportunity. If you tell someone, why don't you uh, please come in and mop the floor. They'll look at you with cross eyes. Say, what is this person asking? And this must be some foolish, must be some mental institution. Come and wash Krishna's pots. Oh, man. So there's a secret to understanding this uh, connection between devotional service. And because Krishna is saying, only by devotional service can I be known. And so we're giving people the opportunity, but it has to be presented in a, in a manner that they can relate to initially. So we don't give them all the details. If a person is a little favorable, I say, can you, you know, help out in the kitchen? We don't say, can you clean your heart necessarily? You know, if you do, they just, it's a, it's a secret. We're, we're engaging people in a secret process. They have so many so-called secret societies. You can't be a president of the United States unless you've been one, a member of some certain secret societies. Okay? And it's not the Boy Scouts. But there's, but you have to, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's all these different types of uh, things. So this, all these things that we know, technically they're secrets. They're not common knowledge that if you engage in certain aspects of, of physical labor that it, you'll, you'll, or your heart will be cleansed. You know, so these things uh, are of the highest esoteric knowledge when we were kids, you know, we used to read comic books. And they used to have advertisements in the comic books for something called the Rosicrucians. It was a society. And, they're, and, they're, and who are they targeting? They're targeting young adults to try to become involved in some uh, metaphysical appreciation. But this is, these are things which are not, you know, if you look up Rosicrucians, it's a pseudo-Christian type of situation, you know, but they're, they're attracting you by the promise of some uh, secret knowledge that nobody else has, but they're advertising in a comic book, you know, so it just tells you where that's at. Everybody knows what a comic book is? You know, like Ama Chitra Kata? You know, it's a, you know. So this, so they have, you know, we have the, the actual knowledge in the original text, in the original language. There's nothing more secret. Raja Vidya, Raja Goyam, Pavitra Mida Muttama, Pratyaksha Bhagamamya. The most secret of all secrets, the purest knowledge. And it is right here, you know, that Krishna is directly giving to Arjuna. And then we see that, you know, Krishnadas Kaviraj was saying that I've heard this directly you know, we, 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 this is such a, a benediction to the entire world. Uh, Prabhupada said, well, not Prabhupada, Prabhupada repeated that uh, people in the future will learn Bengali just to read it in the original text. Just to read it in the original text. Because there are certain esoteric aspects language cannot accurately convey. The wrong language. Bengali can convey it, but English is deficient. Mm -hmm. But somehow or other, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, he has given us this essence. And so we have access that very few people previously had access. That's why everything expanded so much so in the United States first. And Prabhupada took such time, if you read the letters to Prabhupada's early disciples, from 66 to 67, et cetera, while he was in the U.S. before he went back. And then when he came back, uh, he's very patient, explaining everything, especially the nature of the spiritual master. Because he didn't want them to make the mistake that they did make at one point in conflating the, spirit, the position of the spiritual master and, and Krishna as being one. 
And he tried to tell him, he says, no, if you think that the spiritual master is Krishna, then when you become spiritual master, you become Krishna. No, it doesn't work like that. <coughs> but they were thinking like that. And so Prabhupada had to correct the situation. Right in the very beginning. And how important was it to correct it? He had to send out three of his most senior men and tell them to go out of the society and go preach independently till they realize their mistake. So such a serious thing because he understood that this is not just simply his International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This is the manifestation of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan preaching mission. And he was entrusted with this. And he had to do whatever was necessary, even to the extent that he had to expel his senior men. Because it, it could not interfere with this 10,000-year uh, golden age simply for a couple of individuals, no. So we should also not be sentimental. We should arm ourselves with knowledge, right? Stand and fight. Probably we like that. In the Lilamrita, a couple of chapters before, it said, chant Hare Krishna and fight. That's the name of the chapter, chant Hare Krishna and fight. So what are we fighting? Mostly we're fighting Maya. Right? We want to, in the sense that we have to learn how she uh, manipulates the material mode of nature in such a subtle way as to entrap you uh, without you even realizing it at first, sometimes until it's too late. So they have something you learn in various occupations called situational awareness. So we have to practice situational awareness. Who am I? What is my duty? You know, it's not that you let your guard down. They even have it, they even, you know, you see like a, a stoplight is sometimes used in the early training stages so that you have a red light, which means to be on full alert. And yellow means caution. In other words, you're in a more or less safe area, like in a temple. But even in a temple, there can be problems. And then green, like when you go to certain places, you feel completely that there's no danger. You know, it's a safe place. But in the whole material world, everything in the material world is in the yellow condition, caution. So you have to have that mentality. You don't drop your guard. You don't give Maya a pass to walk in, you know, past your defenses. You know, what are your defenses? Your daily attention to, you know, the, our sadhana. This is not some artificial practice which is imposed on us in order to uh, manipulate us or brainwash us. You know, this chanting, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Cheta Dharpa Namajam, it cleanses the dust and it allows you to have a clear picture of who I am and who am I. I am a servant of Krishna. I am a servant of the spiritual master. And I keep that attitude wherever I go. You know, I have my kunti, I have my sika, I have my dress, I have my tilak. This is our defense. We keep this always with us. Of course, we, always, we also have the holy name. Wherever we are, it doesn't matter whatever condition we're in, we can chant the holy name. There's no hard or fast rules, right? So the essential uh, point in the beginning is to recognize who the spiritual master is, the intimate uh, servant of Krishna, the worshiper Krishna. Prabhupada uses that term, the worshiper Krishna. And so he is accepting our service and he is kindly offering it to the divine couple. He says, please accept this service from this sincere person. So we have to do everything in our 
limited power to try to become a, a humble servant of the spiritual master. And sometimes that means suppressing the ego. Right? We have this ego which has been with us since time immemorial. And you come to the human form of life and we think we're at the top of the food chain. Right? Nobody tells us what to do. Right? That's what you've heard people. Nobody tells me what to do. You can hear it out of the mouths of teenagers. You can hear it out of the mouths of preteens. You can hear it out of the mouths of old people. Nobody tells me what to do. But the material energy will pound them into dust. Right? Because if you don't accept Krishna, then Krishna will appear to you as death. Right? Everyone accepts. Yeyatama Padyante. As they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. Everyone follows my, Krishna's path in all respects. But either you do it willingly or you do it unwillingly. So this is our choice. So we should be willing servants of the spiritual master. We should try to appreciate what is the mission? How can I serve it? Whatever talents I have. And, you know, even beyond those talents, first allow me to uh, fully appreciate my subordinate position. Because then only when this nimitta matram bhava savyasachin. And Krishna tells Arjuna, Arjuna is a, a bowman par excellence. There's no one superior to him. There may have been a, one person, but he lost his thumb in a, in a very unfortunate turn of events. Everyone knows that story? Anyway, yeah, lo, what's his name again? Ek Lovia. And we'll tell it out. But Nimitta means just become an instrument. So you have to be a, an instrument in good repair. You can't be a broken instrument. You know, if somebody says, hand me a wrench and they give you a broken wrench, what, what is the use? You know, that's useless. So Ekalavia was not uh, in the right, from the right family background, you can say, in order to be accepted as a teacher by the, the guru, Drona. And so, but he was watching from a distance how when the Pandava, when the brothers were being instructed in the martial arts, and he learned it so well that he actually excelled all of them, including Arjuna, who was the best bowman. But then he was discovered uh, that, you know, to be, to have this, you know, because he demonstrated this prowess and nobody could, everybody could understand this person is superior to everyone. But he's not a chattira. He's not fit to have this power. Power in the wrong hands. We've heard that saying. Power in the wrong hands. So Dronacharya very tactfully said, well, you know, if, do you accept me that I'm your guru? You accept? He said, yes, then you owe me dakshin. And guru dakshin, you have to give to the guru. So what did he ask as dakshin? He asked his thumb, because you can't pull a bowstring without the thumb. I mean, maybe you could with some. We've seen people pull bow strings with their toes. They have people without arms doing these tricks now. You've seen it on, on, on uh, whatever they call it, YouTube. So they're doing, they're doing all these things. So Ekalovia, maybe he could have done that, but the thing is, he understood the lesson. That's the point. He didn't try to challenge his guru and say, okay, he took my thumb, I'll use my other thumb. Because Arjuna is uh, uh, ambidextrous. What's that name again? Ba anyway, there's, a, there's his name. His name is Amadex. I forget which name it is, though. Oh. Not Sarah said, just another. Anyway, we'll remember it as soon as we finish here. But yes, Arjuna could do anything with either hand. So he was ambidextrous, which is a great talent in and of itself. But the idea is to become an instrument. So how do we become instruments? We have to become an instrument that, is, that the spiritual master is willing to use. 
And so therefore, we always have to remain very uh, conscious of our position you know, in relationship to the spiritual realm. I'm, it is not something that will ever become equal, you know, or even to the extent of friendly, you know. Prabhupada can conduct himself in a friendly relationship, but the, spiritual, the, the disciples should never think that now the spiritual master has become my friend. He is the dearmost friend, but he is not on that level of, of uh, how can you say, familiarity that we describe. No. He's just like Krishna. He's the dearmost friend. What Prabhupada would do for his disciples when you've seen to the extent that he would try to rescue someone, then you can understand that what is the, how uh, intimate the relationship is that the spiritual master, the external manifestation of Krishna would come down and try to extricate you even after you've crawled back into the stool. Even after you've crawled back into the stool, he will try to pick you out. So such relationship, very, you know, we even see that in parental relationships. At a certain point, parents give up. They say, you're on your own. You know? What's the worst thing they can say? Sometimes they say, they say, you're dead to me. Very heavy, right? You're dead to me. But the spiritual master will never do that. And I probably even quoted from, the, from that uh, passage, from that parable in the Bible about the prodigal son. The prodigal son, he goes out of the home, but the father welcomes him back in as if he'd never left. You know, not considering what transpired in his absence. So in one sense, we are all prodigal children. We've all left and come back. You know, after Bahonam, Jamanama, after many, many births. After many, many births. So we should take advantage now, while we have this knowledge, we should take advantage because who knows how long before Maya covers you over again. It doesn't take much doesn't take much. Once you have some realization, you have to act on it. And the more you act on the realizations, the more they will come, and the more you will advance in your appreciation of the various facets. It's not uh, this understanding, this Yashidevi Prabhakti, it's an amazing shloka. All the imports of the Vedas will be automatically revealed. How, how is that? Krishna says, I am seated in the heart of every living entity. And from me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. So there's no artificial imposition. It is already there waiting to be revealed to you. If you're a worthy recipient. It's just waiting there. Sometimes you see, how did this devotee become so advanced? He's so young. Where did all this knowledge come from? It came from some sincere... Uh, service attitude, either in this lifetime or a previous lifetime, that he was blessed so that he could avoid, he didn't have to go through an entire life of misery and mistakes before he accepted Krishna, like many of us did. But it wasn't so long. When we joined, we, there was enough time to make as many mistakes as required and to, before, and then by Krishna's mercy, come in contact with the pure devotee. Right? To understand that, yes, this material life is useless. You have to have at least that recognition, that realization, that there's nothing in this material world. It's not, nothing. It doesn't matter what you do and what you try. And if you, you know, but if you have some misgivings, if you're holding something back, if you think, well, I haven't done this, maybe I still need to try this, then that is Maya's opening for you. So you have to kick out those and that you can get the knowledge from reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Everything is there in detail. Every situation you could ever encounter in a full lifetime, in a hundred years, if you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's no need for you to subject yourself unnecessarily to having to experience it yourself, which is third-class intelligence. 
All right, isn't that how we understand? First class intelligence is by hearing. Second class intelligence is by what? Seeing. Third class intelligence is by experiencing. And what's fourth class intelligence? Even after hearing, seeing, experiencing, still one doesn't learn. Still one doesn't learn. And, and we've, seen, we've seen people do it, constantly repeating. They even have that, that saying, yeah? If you constantly do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. All right, so we should be intelligent enough to recognize the truth, even in these simple aphorisms, even though they're coined by some, you know, psychology, whatever. Doesn't matter, it's a truism. You know? And insanity is the same also. You know, constantly repeating the same thing and expecting a different result. So we're so fortunate, but we have to feel ourselves fortunate and we have to then act on that platform. That yes, I've been given my life, actually. I've been given my eternal life. How, how grateful, how much more could I do to the spiritual man? What, what, how can I repay this debt? Never. Somebody gives you life, and they say uh, 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 life debt. They have such a thing in previous ages that if you save someone life, he owes you his life. Now you, are, you belong to him until at such time when that debt can be repaid. So we have that debt, and it cannot be repaid. But we should endeavor to the best of our ability, to the best of our capacity, to every day do something to try to minimize that debt. Something I haven't done before, something I normally, you know, I neglect to do. Whatever it is. We have our routine activities, but beyond that, what can I do above and beyond the call of duty, right? Because that's when you get the medal. You don't get the medal for doing your routine activities. Soldiers are doing their routine activities. Until you go above and beyond the call of duty, you don't get a medal. So this is the challenge. Everyone should go above and beyond what they think is, well, I'm, I'm just a cook, bro. I'm, I, the, the temple commander told me I only have to do this. No. Okay. You can go on like that, listening to the temple commander for 50 years. Or you could become the temple commander and take that responsibility. Or the temple president, or the GBC, whatever. You can do so many things. But if you only want to do the minimum, then, as you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. Chris is telling you right up front, there's no, he's not lying to you. He's not, you know, making you read the whole thing and then pulling a surprise at the very end. By the way, if you don't do this, you don't get that. No, he, right up front, he's telling you, surrender to the spiritual master, surrender to me, you know, avoid this, do this, don't do this. Very clear. No surprises. We'll read this again. Such an interesting sloka, right? Although I know that my spiritual master is a servitor of Sri Chaitanya, I know him also as a plenary manifestation of the Lord. And who is his spiritual master? Who's Krishna Das Kaviraj's spiritual master? Lord Nityananda. The original spiritual master. Who can imagine the potency of this Chaitanya Charitamrita? So we're very fortunate to, to be in this line. We should be very proud of it. People are proud of so many things. They're proud of the family, they're proud of this person. But what, what, what is, what, how can you be proud? That so-called royal family is just a bunch of whatever. Right? They have that, on, what do they call them? Dead presidents. So in England, they must call them dead kings and queens. So, you know, there's a bunch of dead presidents on the dollar bills. You know? So there's no real value in, in any of this. So, but we have life. We have e eternal life. And we have access to it now because we can engage on that platform in our constitutional position. So this is something that, um, yeah, it's, it's confidential knowledge, right? The most secret of all secrets. So any questions or comments or...
Yes, Mother Janaki. There's a microphone here. Prabhu was taking a little. Needs to, we need to pass it down. Because this is for the benefit of the audience. I can't hear it in any case, unless you yell it loudly. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a nice class. Um, my question was that often we hear that uh, we're in the ISKCON family. And even Srila Prabhupada said, you are all my children. And, uh, and I love all my... I just read a letter from Satsuru Maharaj. And he said, I love all my American boys and girls. And all my children. And, um, and so I was just thinking that there's a lot of ideas in the West, especially where family tradition is so broken. And uh, so maybe there's this mood of you, you have to deserve respect or earn you know, respect. And um, so I was just wondering, what part of family, uh, the qualities of family, should we take and appreciate and hold on to without becoming familiar? Well, I mean, we all, at least respect for one's elders is part of the culture that still remains prevalent in the East as opposed to the West. So this is, it's not difficult for those who are born into that culture to have appreciation. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the dress of a sannyasi when he saw that in his toll, in his school, everyone was considering him on the same platform. That what makes him the teacher, what makes him superior. So he realized that, it, and this is Chanakya Pandit also says that in, one should not remain in a place where he doesn't get respect or wealth or other things, knowledge. So he had to go and automatically people pay respect to a sannyasi. Even if they don't know him, even if they just see him, they automatically pay respect. So that there's a, an intrinsic value in the, seeing the spiritual master as the father, uh, the spirit, uh, he, actually he's everything to us. But you know, in that sense, he's uh, as in this level of interaction, because we understand that the spiritual master is ultimately Uttama Adhikari. But he comes to this platform of Madhima for preaching. And he develops this relationship with us uh, in order to ex and accept our service. And of course, that these loving exchanges are the dati prati grinati. They're, they're meant to train us how we can appreciate, because yeah, I, how can I love Krishna? I don't know Krishna. You know, I know by what I've heard and read, but is there a real, you know, relationship at this point? You know, in our neophyte position of uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, we're worshiping Radha Krishna as Lakshmi Narayan in awe and veneration. We should always be careful to have that consciousness, not become familiar. Prabhupada said it's very quickly, very easy to become a sahaja. Very easy. Right. So, but if one directs his affection towards the spiritual master in whatever, you can't. You can, you can think on so many levels, but ultimately it has to be in, in a parental situation. You know, neutral, there's no opportunity for service. Servitor, yes, of course, we can be in that position. But it's natural to serve one's parents if he's been brought up in the right <coughs> culture. Right? And of course, the best way to serve one's parents is to serve Krishna. You know, so we're able to do all these things uh, at one stroke, so to speak, you know, without any extra endeavor. So, and we're also trying, it's, it, and, and amongst the devotees, I mean, why does Rupa Goswami emphasize this didati putti grinati, this loving exchanges? You know, we have, we, we're, we are family, there's no doubt. In, in the spiritual sense, for sure. And certainly, at some point, everyone will have family in a different way. You know, he'll be making his family, you know, if one is a grahasta, and if he's not, he's sannyas, and he has his own family, his own sangha. And Brahmachari has his own sangha. But this is all of, this is brothers and sisters, uh, brothers and brothers. 
So we have to also just try to appreciate the etiquette that Rupa Goswami is passing down to us as well in this Dadati Priti Griyana. It's not artificial. It's not that I go to you and with some false intention, make some presentation to evoke a particular response. No, this is, it has to be genuine. You know, we're here, at, we're, we're, we, we join this movement to develop our genuine personality and therefore have genuine relationships, not based on this bodily concept, not based on what I can get from you. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. There's no, none of this uh, mundane uh, reciprocation. No. It's a selfless thing. I'm, I'm serving my God brothers not with any uh, thought of, of uh, remuneration. Uh, I'm serving because I understand that, yes, this is, as a family member, we serve. We serve each other. Who, who said that? Did Matunga say that yesterday in class? Charity begins at home. Okay. He was mentioning Sam, but it's the same thing. You know, we concentrate on developing our relationships here. Uh, this expands to how we interact with the public. It also determines, to a certain extent, how we interact with the spiritual master. You know, so one, we have a lot of uh, learning and unlearning to do. Unlearning our bad habits and learning all these uh, wonderful exchanges that Rupa Goswami has so thoughtfully and kindly given us in a nectar of instruction. So, thank you for that nice question, Mother Janaki. So it's 9, 10, we all have service. And the first service is to honor Prasadam. So we'll go down and meditate on how Krishna is there in everything we do. Every little thing. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Shri Shri Radha Govinda Dev Ki, Iskand New York City Ki. Hari Bol. <laughs>